everyone. My name is Austin Belzer from Austin B Media, but if you're watching this, you probably already know this. Uh, I am here today with my reviews of episodes one and two of High School Musical the Musical the Series, uh, season three. Um, episode one is titled Happy Campers, and episode two is Into the Unknown. So before I get started, I want to give you a bit of my history with the, uh, the franchise as a whole and the Disney Plus show. So, I grew up watching the Disney Channel original movies, High School Musical 1, High School Musical 2. I didn't watch High School Musical 3 senior year, uh, Sharpay's Fabulous Adventure. Um, it just, I didn't want to go to the theater for High School Musical 3, and I kind of grew out of the franchise as a whole by that point. Um, but when Disney Plus announced their lineup of the day one shows that they were going to launch with Disney Plus, uh, one of them being high, uh, a series based on High School Musical, uh, set in the universe that uh, these movies exist in. Um, I, I, I just knew it was going to be a show I would always love. Um, and that premiered in November of 2019 when Disney Plus, Plus launched. Uh, from there, I've seen... The season one, season two, both specials, the holiday special and the Christmas special. Um, I think that's what they're called. Uh, the sing-along and the sing-along version of the first season. Uh, however, as I wasn't reviewing things in 2006, 2007, 2008, 2011, and was kind of busy uh, reviewing things like Cruella and Spiral from the Book of Saw, uh, this is actually the first time I've been able to give my opinion on the series up until this point. So, what, is, what are my thoughts about the show so far? Um, season one was great. Um, I loved what they did with uh, Joshua Bassett's character, Ricky. He was, he was um, the heart of the show for season one. Um, Olivia Rodrigo's character, Nini, was okay. She could have used some work, but Olivia Rodrigo and Joshua Bassett really made it work with their chemistry together. And I think the mockumentary angle worked really well, too. Um, However, and, and all of the side characters, like Big Red, uh, played by Larry Saperstein, um, Frankie Rodriguez's Carlos, the comedy worked very well with the musical and dramatic elements of the ser series. Um, however, in season two, I think the pandemic that shall not be named, as well as some behind-the-scenes drama with Olivia ba uh, Rodrigo and Joshua Bassett, uh, heavily impacted how this season was going to go rather than how, how it was planned to go. Um, but that said, the acting has been top tier from Joshua Bassett, Olivia Rigo, uh, Larry Saperstein, uh, Julia Lester. Uh, her song from season one, Wondering, was great. Um, they kind of forgot about her in season two, but that's okay. Um, it, 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 there was a lot going on in that season. Uh, Dar Dara Renee, um, her... her she got a lot better in season two. They gave, a, gave her a lot more character development. Uh, Frankie Rodriguez is Carlos. He was great. Uh, Kate Reindeer's Mrs. Jen. Uh, she was great, kind of the kind of full, uh, gem of, of the series uh, when uh, Ricky wasn't there. But again, though, all that acting took a really big nosedive in season two for the reasons I previously mentioned. Nevertheless, I, towards the end of season two, I was, I've been really excited to see what season three would bring. Um, it was renewed in September of uh, last year, and it gave me hope that Disney saw these, where season three was gonna go, and was com were confident that people would give the series a second chance after that s second season. Look, I'm sorry I keep bagging on season two so hard, but it was that bad. For anyone who watches, watched that season, you know what I'm talking about. So, is season three worth the hype? Well, I usually wait until, you know, the wrap-up section of my review, but yes, yes, and yes. Uh, everything that was wrong with season two has been fixed here. That's, I don't want to get into spoilers, but... The season opener was a breath of fresh air that the series desperately needed. There's no out-of-nowhere plot lines. There's 
uh, is not, the bloat is gone. Um, so, so for those who don't know what the season's about, it it has our favorite Wildcats, Ricky, Gina, uh, played by Sophia Wiley, EJ, played by Matt Cornett, Ashlyn, Courtney, Carlos, at Camp, Sh- camp Shallow Lake, which is a summer camp, or some call it a sleepaway camp in California, where they, as well as fa- fellow campers, Maddox, played by Sailor Bell Curta, Jet, played by a- Adrian Lyles, are taking in the sights and sounds of the great outdoors, the freedom of nights without a curfew, and a little bit of romance on the side. However, with Camp Shallow Lake putting on the first ever production of Frozen and a docu-series uh, about the production, our Wildcats have a lot to prove. Primarily, who's best in snow, without leaving anyone behind in the chilling winds of Arendelle. Happy Campers, written by Zach Dowds, who also wrote the third episode of season one, subtitled The Wonder Studies, as well as the third, 11th, and 12th episodes of season two. I should note that these episodes are some of my favorites of the series. Um, So fans who love those episodes should be excited to watch this premiere episode. However, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, Dode's writing tends to lean on the more emotional aspects of the overall narrative and the consequences those uh, aspects bring to the season. Additionally, each episode he writes seems to have an overlying sense of impending doom or outside pressure that seems impossible to get past, but somehow works out in the end. In this premiere episode, he definitely hones in on his strengths and flips audiences' expectations on their head. Again, I can't say too much without divulging spoilers, but it was a nice change of the pace of the show that had become predictable and overwrought with last-minute twists to drive the story forward. This season, at least so far, what my one note about the performances from the cast is that it feels like the cast is finally having fun again. The highlights of this episode are Joshua Bassett and Sophia Wiley, and not for the reasons you think. In addition, newcomers Curta and Lyles firmly cement their place as a great replacement for Nini, Big Red, and Seb, who all have moved from the main cast to either a recurring role or a guest role. At this point, as much as I love these characters, I'd be fine with the series completely replacing their roles with Jet and Maddox, as their roles are in- instantly more interesting than anything I think that Tom Federley, Tim Federley, the showrunner, could have done with them that- this season. I-, I can't say much about the musical numbers without snipers circling outside, but I will say that there are bangers in this episode with a song Ricky sings and a mashup number reminiscent of last season's High School Musical 2 medley. Both songs show off the cast's stellar vocal ta- talent and are many of the reasons I keep coming back to the show each season. So, Wildcats, if season two had you feeling down about the prospect of High School Musical, the musical, the series, don't worry. From what I can tell you of the first episode, it's off to a great start. The first episode is rated five stars out of five. Happy Campers, the season three premiere episode, will be available to stream on Disney+. Plus on July 27th. Season one and two of High School Musical, the musical the series are available to stream on Disney Plus, as well as the two specials and sing-along versions I have previously mentioned. In case you, um, you m- missed it. So now that the first episode is out of the way, let's talk about the second episode, Into the Unknown. Again, avoiding spoilers, this episode deals with the fallout of the first episode of the season while finding t- the time to dig deeper into the questions surrounding the season thus far. That said, I believe Alana Wolperts, who wrote the sixth episode of season two, known as Yes And, which was a decent entry into that season, if I recall, her writing is a massive downgrade from Dodes. Instead of keying in on the why of these questions or explaining the the new plot lines brought up in the episode, Wolpert seems content to shuffle characters off screen as fast as possible. What's even worse is that there are cases every now and then in the episode where the writing is not consistent with the previous episode or even seasons prior. It's an odd drop in quality, and I hope it picks up with the next episode, episode three. That said, everyone's performance is great. I have no issues. Uh, Particular highlights are newcomer Sailor Bell Curta's portrayal of Maddox and Adrian Lyle's 
portrayal of Jet. The duo gets some of the best scenes of the episode. I particularly enjoyed a scene where Joshua Bassett's Ricky misunderstands a joke, and it's one of the great physical performances of, well, his, his entire performance as Ricky. In a series where musical is mentioned twice in his name, the episode takes some time to give Gina, Nini, and everyone at Camp Shallow Lake an opportunity to sing their hearts out. If I had to give any criticism to whoever is writing the songs for this episode, use Sophia Wiley and Olivia Rodrigo's musical styles more. Their songs, well, they're catchy. They don't tend to lean into those singers' natural sounds, uh, especially Rodrigo's. I get that it's a show meant for young adults and not 20-somethings like myself, but I guarantee you that anyone listening will feel the same when they hear these songs. Much weaker entry into the unknown proves that there is not enough time to introduce each plot line and resolve them in under 30 minutes. I'll still watch it when it comes to Disney Plus on August 3rd, but I'm going to be fast-forwarding a lot. Like I said previously, Into the Unknown will be available to stream on Disney Plus on August 3rd. You can stream the first two seasons of High School Musical, the musical, the series, on Disney Plus, as well as the two specials and sing-along versions I mentioned uh, before. And if you'd like to listen to me watch the episodes, I have links to my commentaries of both episodes one and two if you're uh, list watching or listening to this um, past the 27th or August 3rd. I'll have those links in the description. And until next time, this is Austin signing off. But uh, thanks to all my patrons for making this possible. Really, you keep everything going. Thanks so much. Thank you.